what is happening here is Stan here of Time here on the MC of Time channel presenting you with my top 10 Legend of Zelda games. Since Shigeru Miyamoto's production of The Legend of Zelda on the Famicom Disk System in 1986, the Legend of Zelda franchise has been bringing new and old players alike to the living room to enjoy their Nintendo consoles at their best. Nintendo has been champions of entertainment since 1889. And since 1886, they have provided the video game industry with the most original characters and rich stories. Among these characters and stories, certainly some of the most memorable ones have originated from the Legend of Zelda series. However, even in such a great series, there are highs and lows, and everyone has their own opinions as to what Zelda titles are the best. Personally, The Legend of Zelda has been a very important game in my life, and picking 10 favorites and then prioritizing them has been very difficult. Rather than just picking my 10 games and telling you why I picked them, like most would do, I decided to, t to pick my top 10 and then calculate the order. So I've selected my 10 favorite Zelda games and each has been graded on 11 criteria. First, graphics. And we're never going to use the excuse that's good for its time. Music, a cornerstone in the Legend of Zelda series. Story, as Zelda is well known for being amongst Nintendo's most compelling. Equipment and weapons. Bosses, perhaps the most memorable aspect of Zelda games. Temples, the crown jewel of Zelda games. Side quests, which are abundant in the series, but must not be integral to the completing of the game. Sidekicks, which are infamous amongst Zelda loyalists. Zelda or the damsel, the most important aspect for chivalry. The final battle, the dramatic last note of the song. And the unique elements. These are the criteria for rating my top 10 Zelda games. Each will receive a score of 5 to 0. The highest possible score being 55. When rating these Zelda games, I tried best as possible to look at them from the viewpoint of when I first played them, that being 10 plus years for some, and a few of these titles I have not played in several years. While planning out what to say for these videos, I realized that if I expand on all 11 criteria for each game, it will be quite a long two videos, so for each game I am going to tell you the one or two criteria that it did really well in, and the ones it did worse, not counting scores of zero because that means that aspect is simply not present, and I would not have anything to say about it. Before we begin, I would just like to clarify, some may be distraught when they see that A Link Between Worlds did not make the list, but the reason for this is I have yet to play it. My girlfriend bought it for me this Christmas, but I have not had time. Maybe it will be on the list next time. Let's go. Those who know me will know I have attempted to be objective in making my top 10 by my choice for number 10. A Zelda game I have played to completion many times, one I have replayed more than the sum of the playthroughs I have done of every handheld Zelda game combined, Link's Awakening. Let's be honest, Zelda was made for the top-down perspective. The view has worked wonders for this series. Link's Awakening is host to numerous memorable images, like the starting video sequence, the hilarious photo booth images, characters with big noses, and some uniquely original character textures. Graphics are really where this game shined for me. Now I know what you are thinking, whoa, whoa, how can you say one of the best dimensions of a Zelda on Game Boy is graphics? All I have to say is this. Link's Awakening is a rare Zelda game in that it contains no lame or useless equipment. For the most part there is nothing truly awesome, but no one can deny how fun it was to dig around for hours looking for rupees. The weapons were just fun. Like finally acquiring the Magikrat and being able to kill those cursed Kukukos once and for all. While not overwhelmingly exciting, every weapon is useful, and unlike other Zelda games, there are no items you find yourself never using. I have always thought reusing bosses is lazy, but reusing boss concepts is as well. Link's Awakening really failed with bosses. Look at Moldorm and Slime Meal, or Facade, Hothead, and maybe even Slime Eye. In addition to the, this, the bosses are simply boring. Let's have a fish. Nope, not that fish, Anglerfish. And they are easy. The game is host to easy, repetitive, unmemorable boss fights, and it leaves a lot to be desired. I don't really have any bad memories of this game. As I said, I always loved it. However, in hindsight, it has many shortcomings, but there are two things I will always remember Leaks and Awakening for. First, that shop. What an awesome place. You can steal from this fool, then he makes you pay. The ultimate price. Awesome. Second would be the story. We're talking about a unique Zelda game. No Ganon, Zelda's name mentioned once, collecting instruments you give to a fish, and it was all just a dream. Number 10 on the list, but one of my favorite video games. 
2003, the first 3D style Zelda since 2000, and the first Zelda game for the Nintendo GameCube was released. Extremely excited to see what the good souls of Nintendo had devised for my selfish self to trick my parents into buying, I approached the Wind Waker with high hopes. But this game, appalling to my hopeful eyes, was the start of a franchise-shaming sub-series known as the Adult Timeline. Fast forward four years to 2007 and you will find Phantom Hourglass at our number 9. To be honest, this game did not do a lot for me, but it is my favorite in the adult timeline. One thing Phantom Hourglass did well was sidekicks. That is, three sidekicks. Rather than just throwing a few fairies down and having them yell, hey! the fairies played an active role in the story and proceeding of the game and are symbolic, even if it is not so obscure. Each of the three fairies represents one of the goddesses from the Triforce, and they each bring new powers to Link. Sila, the amnesic fairy that first meets Link on his journey. She represents the goddess Feror, the goddess of courage, a fitting partner for the hero holding the Triforce segment of courage. When she regains her memory, Link will learn to use sword beams. Leaf, representing Din, the goddess of power, provides Link with the ability to engulf his sword in fire, raising its offensive power. Neri, clearly representing Nehru, the goddess of wisdom. She provides Link the ability to surround himself in a bubble that raises his defense. The sidekicks may be a bit cheesy, but they are cool, useful, and dynamic. I absolutely hate this style of graphics for Zelda. Every time they have announced the coming release of this type of Zelda, I dread the inevitable money I will waste on it. The worst thing about these games is the graphics style. Put it on the DS and it makes it way worse. The graphics in the game are just a shame, and I have nothing good to say about them. One memory of this game made it great for me, and is the reason it is on this list at all. The online minigame. You know, where you either control or run from the phantoms? That is so much fun, and I put hours into that minigame. That is the only time I really felt like I was enjoying this game. Zelda has not dabbled into multiplayer very much, but when it has, it has been beautiful. Four Swords Adventure for the GameCube was not really that great of a game, but by adding a four-player dynamic, this game became awesome. Four Swords' biggest success was in being unique. This game had several unique elements. Two-dimensional, top-down view on a console. Replayable stages rather than the normal world dungeon layout. You cannot have more than one secondary item, so you are forced to decide what is important or most useful. Obviously, the four-player dynamic, creating many new, creative, and at times very challenging obstacles and dynamics. My favorite thing from the game, the mini-games. Unlocked after defeating each stage with at least two players, there are eight challenging, friendship-testing mini-games that truly make this game a gem for me. I like it when the damsel is useful. Yeah, I know I am the hero and I need to save the girl, but who wants to save a princess who is unwilling to help herself on occasion? In Four Swords Adventure, Zelda was kind of a drag. She calls you to the Four Swords Sanctuary. She gets herself and the six maidens kidnapped by Shadow Link, and this all results in Link drawing the Four Swords, splitting in four, and releasing the evil Vaddy, who somehow ends up not being the boss of the game. Then she is gone, and that's basically it until the end for her. You save her from daddy, protect her slow, royal booty while you flee the Tower of Winds. Then she throws a ball of light out and you kill Ganon. The reason all this is irritating is you don't really feel happy to have saved her. She sort of got herself into this mess and you have to come clean it up for her. Ugh, women. Just like with Phantom Hourglass, but even more so with Four Swords Adventure, my favorite memory of the game was the multiplayer minigames. But in this game, there are a lot, and there are a ton. My number 7 is sure to infuriate many. I realize that lots of people love this game, but it has never done a whole lot for me. The latest Zelda release was a sequel to it. In 1992, A Link to the Past was born, and has been a legend in the Legend of Zelda franchise, but, to be honest, I am not so sure why. Personally, the first time I played this was on the Game Boy Advance, and I don't remember beating it completely more than once, just because it wasn't that fun to me. One of the good, memorable things about this game was the equipment. I mean, talk about a lot of stuff. We're talking four swords, multiple shields, the mail that actually affects your defense, the Pegasus boots were just awesome, and almost every item had an upgrade or some alternative form. All the weapons just give the game a ton of variety and made it fun, but at the end of the day, the equipment alone couldn't make it exceptional. 
I love Ganon. He is, by far, my favorite antagonist in any game. But one thing I hate is when he is forced into a Zelda game. It is one thing if the mission of the antagonist the whole time is to free Ganon, but in A Link to the Past you go up, release the Maidens, and fight Agony in an epic, awesome battle. He's actually an original boss, and he's actually pretty cool and interesting to learn about. You strike a profound climax to the end of the game, but guess what? It's not over. Cause Ganon is here, and why wouldn't he be? It's a Zelda game, right? Well that's a crappy excuse. So I am not too fond of this installment into the Zelda series, but I would say a few things stick out for me. The process of the antagonist, Aganim, basically going crazy and sending everything to the dumper, the fact that Zelda is actually useful to you throughout the game, and of course the light and dark world dynamic added a new aspect to the Zelda series. I know this choice may surprise many of you. It may even make you mad. However, I know others whom will be surprised this game made the list at all. But boy do I have rants for this game. My number 7 Zelda game is Skyward Sword. Skyward Sword did two things decent, music and side quests. Probably my favorite part of the game was the side quests. The weapons and tool upgrading system is so compatible with the Zelda game's style. It adds a deeper, more personal feel to the game. From upgrading that useless beetle thingy, repairing your shield a ton of times, or crafting potions, it added a dynamic aspect to the game. Also there is the numerous collections, treasures, bugs, that gratitude stuff, goddess cube hunting, and of course heart piece finding. All of these made the game worth putting in the Wii time and again. After a lousy tempo or objective, you could just catch bugs for days, and collecting is especially therapeutic after many of this game's boss fights. I have so many bad things to say about this game's bosses. They are summed up by this. What a horribly stupid boss. The thing is, the sand strip was actually a cool temple, but this boss was just a joke. After seeing those tentacles, actually hair, or tentacles, or, you know, I don't even know. After seeing these things the whole time, you walk up to this character out of Monsters Inc. What a shame. I have also previously mentioned that reusing bosses is lazy, Well, in this game you fight gear him thrice, and that incredibly stupid, annoying, frustratingly poor, functioning, imprisoned dude at the sealed ground three times as well. I really don't care much for this particular game, but a few aspects will always keep this game on my top 10. First of all, this cutscene.
scene I think I have ever seen in a Zelda game. Also, the connections it makes in the series. I don't like them adding in a fourth goddess, but I liked how it set up Zelda, Link, and Demise starting the Eternal Bloodlines. Finally, Demise was a super cool looking final boss, but he was terribly out of place and his battle was depressing. <laughs> The Legend of Zelda series is truly amazing, but in its history, some successes and some failures have been made. After 17 core games in this great series, it is only destiny that a few will be not as great. Today I have told you about my 10th to 6th favorite Zelda games. Many of them I have great memories of, and their low level on my list surprises even me. In an attempt to be more objective, I have categorized my top 10 in a way that they could be ranked according to set criteria, and it has revealed to me that some of these installations aren't as great as they seem on the surface. If you have thoughts, please leave them in the description below. I would love to hear what you think about my criteria, and rather than tell me why a certain game did not deserve a certain spot, maybe point out something I overlooked from my criteria. If you want, you can comment your top 10 Zelda games below. And you don't even have to try to be objective. Just keep in mind that we all experience these games differently, so be respectful. The games I showed you today are the least of the best, but be sure to check in two weeks from now when I will tell you my top 5 Legend of Zelda games.